So first of all, before we get to jump into all things Big City Greens today, I always like to do a wellness check in these uncertain times of ours. So just uh, simply, how are you doing today? That's so kind of you to ask. Uh, we're doing really well here. We're um, lucky to be healthy and relatively sane. Um, going out for walks is helping a lot, calling friends, but you know, not too much to complain about all in all, given everything that's going on at the world in the world at this time. Exactly. How, is how your... are you doing? Oh, I'm great too. Thank you for asking. Um, oh, good. How has your kind of uh, your professional landscape changed, if at all? I, I saw you posted on Instagram not too long ago. Uh, a shot from your in-home studio where you get to do all your kind of collaboration from. So was that a big shift and a big change for you? You know, it wasn't for me. I mean, obviously, it, it, we used to go in to record um, Big City Green, so that that transition, um, you know, was made very early days um, of the pandemic, recording at home. But I, I didn't have a lot of setup to do. I actually already had that space. Um, I was just using it predominantly for um, auditions, and now it's uh, it's auditions, it's sessions, everything from home. Uh, there'll be the rare in studio um, day if there's a, a very specific technical requirement that a project requires. But otherwise, yeah, it's it's all from home. So. Um, not too huge of a shift on my end. Gotcha. Um, yeah, especially because, you know, writing, you can do that from anywhere. And then obviously the acting is just all being done virtually these days, even on camera. It's wild. Yeah, absolutely. And since you mentioned writing, uh, secondly, the reason I get to talk with you today, we have a very special segment, an episode of Big City Greens coming up for you personally. More on that in just a moment. That's a good tease there for our listeners. But for those of, uh, those of them out there who may not be familiar with the Disney series, how would you describe it to maybe newcomers who are interested in checking it out? Yeah, so Big City Greens is a hilarious show about a family from the country who moves to the big city. And it's all, it's tons of uh, fish out of water storylines um, and this sort of relatable family that's all at once out of their element but fitting into um to this new landscape um and yeah we're in our second season now and we're bringing in all kinds of new characters from the from the city episodes are getting wilder and wackier it seems like by the episode um in this season uh, so yeah that's that's, uh, I would say, how we would describe um, Big City Greens, and it centers around um, Cricket Green, um, this young lad, I think he's about eight years old or so. Um, I play his older sister, Tilly, and then we live um, with our dad, Bill Green, and our grandmother, Alice, and uh, we have uh, our mom who comes in uh, periodically because uh, our parents are not together, but they have an amazing relationship, so it's a really sweet family show. That's a great pitch. I would greenlight it just based on that. But luckily, we're already in season two. So we've got plenty to enjoy. Uh, you mentioned you voice Tilly, obviously, on the series, but you actually got to write yes. a segment in an upcoming episode, uh, today's episode, actually. You got to write that along with your husband as well. So how did that opportunity just in general to, to be able to create a story for the show you're working on? How did that come about? Yeah, it was so much fun and, and a real education, honestly, from, from start to finish. So, yeah, my husband and I were writing partners and we've been writing together for about five, six years now. Um, and it was January of last year. Um, I think I, I had said I had had a dream about like a, a Tilly storyline and I sort of jokingly pitched it, um, you know, to Shane Houghton, one of the creators at a recording session. And he's like, Oh, well, like, it's funny you mentioned something because that like that you had an idea for the show because we just, lost a um, member like of our writing team so like we might be open to um you know hearing some ideas so the idea i did i had in the dream was not what you're going to see on tv um today but um but yeah so my husband took a couple weeks to um prepare some ideas um the the writing staff gave us like really great parameters for sort of what they were looking for and what every single storyline just needed to have. You know, I think um, fans who are like really paying attention to to story can tell that like these these are just very sophisticated episodes. Even though it's you know a kids show, it's this is this is very tight storytelling. So um, yeah, we followed those rigorous guidelines, pitched a bunch bunch of episodes, and um, this is the one that they responded to. 
Fantastic. And you mentioned that your your husband, you've been writing together as uh, writing partners for five, six years now. Yes. So what was this experience like kind of bringing him into this universe, unless he was already sort of involved with it uh, kind of tangentially, but what was that experience like getting to actually create this together for a show that you're you're currently working on? Yeah, so obviously, you know, I'm more involved on a day-to-day basis on the show than than he is, but, um, you know, he's watched every single show um, as well. Like, you know, we've gotten to know the creators, both not just at at recordings, but things like Comic-Con and various fan events. So he he knew the team very, very well and was extremely familiar with, uh, with the show, but in in preparation for that, we definitely rewatched everything um, and reread. You know, he he read episodes that I had already recorded, um, but that were not already out, just so, to make sure that he was up to speed with with where we were at. Because <laughs> you can imagine this many episodes in that you know you come up with an idea of like, how about you know this? It's like, oh, uh, we did that like 20 episodes in season one okay well we can't do that how about this you know so it was um a lot of going like well what can't we do first um and then like what inspires us and sort of finding the intersection of where where that that uh lie gotcha and this isn't you know this isn't your first go round with with writing you've written quite a bit for other projects like uh, instagrammy pleasant events yes so yeah yeah and those were your you know original creation so how did this experience kind of writing for a, a it's kind of an existing story but that you already had some influence on how did that experience kind of differ for you personally and professionally yeah i think i, I mean like i said it was just a really a really good learning experience i think to um and different than when you're steering the ship to jump into somebody else's vision. Um, it wasn't a huge leap because i feel like from moment one you know i, I felt uh like more than just a voice actor on Big City Greens. I feel like, um, you know, the the creators and the directors, the whole team has really allowed um, us actors. I'll, I'll just speak from my experience. I feel like I've been able to um, contribute a lot creatively, more than just like the, the sound files that they get from me at the end of the day. You know, there's a lot of back and forth, even just like as an actor about like, oh, okay, well, I feel like, oh, Tilly might not say that or like, or this feels really organic. And, and so I feel like I've always had a voice um, with, um, with regard to just maintaining like the world of specifically Tilly, of course. So um, coming into their writer's room was was just exciting to to get to have even just a little bit more say you know um in things within within the confines of um what they've built which you know they have such a well-oiled machine at this point um and such a, a terrific framework that um that actually was great uh to come into because there's like there's no way you can fail with these kind of great rules in place and just a terrific staff so you know we might bring in sort of three quarters of an idea and and then the writing staff would be like, oh, how about this, this, and this? And it's like, oh, well, that just ties everything together um, in a way that makes a joke really sing or um, perhaps an A and a B storyline intersect in a way that, you know, Jeff and I hadn't thought about. So, um, yeah, the, the experience was just tremendous uh, start to finish. And I wouldn't say that it felt like I didn't feel like I was the outsider coming in by any means, you know, because it's felt so collaborative, even just on the acting side from day one. Definitely. And that collaborative kind of creative process really comes through, too, when you watch, honestly, any of the episodes. But specifically, I was focusing on, you know, the story structure and, like you said, the A, B and C stories and where they intersect. All that teamwork coming together really makes a a sharp uh, episode that's just fantastic from start to finish. Uh, oh, well, thank you. But since fans will get to see that particular episode tonight, can you maybe tease some of the other ideas that you may have pitched or dreamed up that didn't quite make it? Unless they're kind of saving those for future episodes. I don't know. But maybe something else you could tease? It's a, That's a great question. You know, I don't because this is going back like about a year and a half oh, now. Okay. I, I don't know that I remember. <laughs> I, will, I, I will say I know one that was like... Um, not just 
it's also like swiftly but kindly struck down. And then after the fact, I realized, well, of course that was struck down. We kind of pitched a paranormal um, uh, episode mm. and um, where like the ghost actually did exist. And and then after the fact, I bet like two, three months after I thought, no, at no point, like, of course that was swiftly struck down because the rules of the world are such that like, Anytime there's, you know, Tilly or Cricket or, like, think there's UFOs or whatever, like, it's it's always something else. They're, we're not actually dealing with um, real paranormal stuff. So it was like, I, I realized immediately, well, well, I shouldn't say immediately, a couple months later. Yep, that makes sense as to why that was not, why that was not chosen. Um, yeah. Well, I hope maybe you get to but rework I'll have that to, somewhere. I'll have to go yeah. Yes, may, maybe we will. Maybe we will. We'll come up with a clever um, idea for why they would think there was there was a ghost. I mean, it was some kind of haunted mansion, something or other. Because who doesn't love a haunted mansion? Yeah, Disney loves a haunted mansion for sure. Um, and That's right. You've also had the Halloween special, which is one of my favorite episodes uh, of the first season. So, hey, you never know. Maybe they'll find a way to uh, to work that back you in. You never know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also exactly. had, the, I've had the pleasure of chatting with uh, Chris and Shane at previous times for uh, different episodes and different specials. But I'm curious, how are they as sort of creative collaborators especially when it comes to sort of shaping a story that started with your idea how are they kind of in that writer's room with the team oh gosh i mean they're i i feel like a broken record this many <laughs> years into the show but it remains true they are a dream to work with the two of them um because so uh, i feel like in the room shane is the one who sort of leading the conversation perhaps a little bit more um chris oftentimes it'll it was funny he would like lean back and behind him there was like a whiteboard and so he'll be like drawing perhaps what you're talking about and it's wild to see how creative he is um just it's like oh here here's a joke that you're talking about and he's like well let me just like quickly draw that out um which is just so unusual and i can't imagine that's happening in a ton of writers rooms around town um is getting to see it that immediately um but yeah um shane would be sort of leading the the discussion but you could tell the back and forth um between the two of them it wasn't like shane would ever green light an idea that chris was not a fan of or vice versa you know you can tell that they're just so keyed into each other's sensibilities um and what the show needs um and even when some even when you would pitch an idea that they didn't love it was never like no not that it was just like okay well what about you know this and then um the rest of the writing staff is extremely uh talented as well we learned a ton from kenny byerly who's also you know in a leadership role in that in that room then rachel mcnevin uh, who was a newer writer at the time that that we got to write this episode and then of course carson montgomery is one of the funniest people you'll ever meet so um yeah we we felt incredibly supported um like there was almost no bad idea even if there was a bad idea they made it seem like there was some (laughs) kernel of good that could come out of it yeah Uh, Before I checked out this episode, I was wondering, you know, since you obviously wrote the episode, I was wondering if it would have more of a Tilly focus uh, as as sort of an A story and not to give kind of any plot points and stuff away. But did you did you think of that? Did you think about taking maybe some, you know, some writer's ownership of the character and also acting as at the same time? Did you think about focusing on Tilly for your story? You know, when um, when uh, the news first, we were able to share the news that Mm. like we co-written this episode. and the, that's what Twitter said. It was like, oh my God, I guess it's good. That it's going to be a huge <laughs> Tilly episode. And I was like, actually, no. Like, yeah. Tilly has a really fun runner with Bill, um, which is just so endearing and speaks to her love of animals. But, um, but no, I mean, I guess there were, there might have been a handful because I think we ended up pitching um, eight episodes, mm. um, which each had, you know, ABC, obviously, to them. Uh, so there may have been some that were that were more Tilly centric, um, but not really. I mean, here's here's the thing with this show is I feel like I've I've gotten to express so much of Tilly that it's not like as an actor I was like I have to write myself something because I don't feel like I've gotten to flex, you know, this muscle or right. that muscle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just sort of like 
um, the inspiration of the episode was really, you know, Jeff um, and I were talking about like, what were sort of some of some of our favorite memories as kids? And what were sort of like, what were those sparkly moments in our lives? And so this, this episode centers around um, Remy's birthday party, because we always felt like the birthday parties, our friends' birthday parties were such a highlight um, of the year, you know? Um, And especially now I feel like the timing is ideal for it to come out at this moment where, you know, it's been a few months of kids not being able to go to their friends' birthday parties, host their own, blah, blah, blah. So at least they can live vicariously through cricket and Remy and Tilly and the kids. Exactly. And for those of us who don't, you know, we're still kids at heart, but we're not kids <laughs> in real life anymore. We get to kind of live <laughs> vicariously through those those super fun birthday parties as well. Maybe speaking for myself. Yeah, and let's be case. clear: the parents, the parents are are very involved um, oh, yeah. with this uh, with this episode too. So, uh, Grandma's got just a, a really <laughs> funny runner. I mean, Artemis Pevdani is. There's nothing that she does that's not so so funny. Oh yeah, it was amazing. It was great to watch yeah. for all sorts. Yeah, of even if it's like a sea line, a sea yeah. line, she just pops it a couple times here or there, but she she brightens any scene she's in. Oh, yeah. And it absolutely works. Was that part of your original kind of pitch or was it something that kind of maybe came up in the collaborative process? Uh, that actually was um, more of a that was more of a last minute thing, okay. because at that point we had pitched. Um, I think when we submitted our first outline, actually, we um, we had we had a pitch that grandma lost her glasses mm. like somehow her glasses got um a kid bumps into her and the glasses um get lost at the birthday party and she has to go hunting for them um but unbeknownst to us and you know this was sort of the disadvantage of being just a freelance writer and not on staff is that you don't know what's coming up in the production pipeline right, right? so they were like uh very quickly said oh no we have like a grandma like sight storyline coming up <laughs> so what else what else can you come up with so um so that was born of that like needing to pivot at the last moment yeah well what you came up with was fantastic i can't wait for uh, fans to check it out it's a it's a great uh, even <laughs> if it is a sea storyline it's great real quick well and let me yeah, tell so- you that was one of the things that was one of the things that that was in the sort of like there's a handy guide that was given to us of like do's and don'ts and and how to how to craft a big city greens episode was even if it's a small thing how can you make something feel really big and full of adventure so i think that c storyline really speaks to that uh guide post yeah. is it's gotta feel epic even if perhaps in real life it wouldn't be so epic that's fantastic i'd love to get my hands on that but uh, one of the things that i noticed from the show <laughs> Uh, not to give spoilers away again, but I noticed a scene in which there are quite a few Easter eggs from fellow Disney animated series. And they kind of go by fairly quickly, so you might have to watch it a couple times to, to check it. But if you know what I'm talking about, was that your idea that you pitched or is it something that maybe the board artists and uh, animators came up with and worked in? That was definitely a board artist thing. Oh, cool. um, the, it's it's so, I've, I've learned like so much about the animation process just being on um, Big City Greens from day one because we actually had they invited us actors to come and see a board pitch. I think it was like six episodes or so in. So this is going back several years. Um, which, uh, cause I didn't even know that a board pitch was a thing. I had been on script driven shows before, mm-hmm. but not board driven shows. Um, so that's, that's even another, um, aspect when I say co-written, I'm, I don't mean just with, um, Jeff, right. you know, my husband and writing partner, but I'm, I really mean with the board artists because it, what a, trip to get to watch the episode in advance and see like oh this was the story that we came up with but then you added all these visual gags and you know that that we wouldn't have thought of so like talk about just absolute uh, collaborative experience and now i think this goes without saying but it seems like you had a pretty good time uh, with this experience so would you like to write more episodes in the future if that opportunity comes up Oh yes, you got my number, Disney. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great, and and um, you know, you always you um, look. I'm a big dork who loves to study everything that she's into, and there's only so much sort of school and writing of your own pilots and shooting of your own stuff um, 
that you can do um, and it's so great to get to collaborate with people who are so skilled in storytelling because that's just the best education there is is just doing it uh, and getting to play with with them just these people who have such mastery of the craft uh, my last quick question for you today before i have to let you go what else are you currently working on that fans of yours can look forward to Sure. So at the moment, um, we are working on some fun sketches, some quarantine uh, uh, sort of centric sketches um, that Jeff and I are writing and shooting at the moment. So that will be, I'm sure we'll post about that on social media. very shortly but in the time being you know obviously keep uh keep tuning in to instagrammy we've got more coming out of that and then uh yeah the wrapping up season two of big city greens if you can if you can believe it already we're at that point already well we've got more episodes to look forward to and hopefully many more uh in the years to come so thank you again so much for your time today best of luck with your other projects thank you so much and looking forward to more big city greens thanks again Awesome. Thank you.